It's preparing. Now we're live. Okay. And for me, it should be opening up the Facebook window. So I don't know how your computer is set up, but you can look on your phone for comments or you can look on your computer as well. But um, I can also keep track uh, for us if that is if that works for you. Cool. That sounds good. I'll, I'll open it up on my phone too. So I have a couple screens open. Cool. Yeah, I know you've got like a cool setup. <laughs> I did that one day. Today's yeah. different, yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, I can tell that we're live, but it's not like showing video. So let me just check on my phone as well. And if anyone happens to be here, let us know. Oh, I see Lauren on the, yes, Lauren's here. Hi, Lauren. Beautiful. Oh, it's automatically captioning us too. I love that. Okay. Oh, awesome. I love that they added that feature. Uh, Krista's here too. Krista, you crossed your fingers and your toes and you were able to make it. I'm so glad. <laughs> and Cynthia, oh, Cynthia, you are going to like this. <laughs> like, I just know it. <laughs> Cynthia is a friend from EPT and uh, she's dope. <laughs> I'll just say that. <laughs> Yay. I mean, and I have had good times. <laughs> that's all I want to be around, right? <laughs> I know, dope people. <laughs> that's it. And Michelle, oh, Michelle, I miss you. I just want to give you a hug. I'm having like a very Cancerian moment right now. I feel like <laughs> also today is Monday, moon day, ruled by the moon. It just feels, yeah, I normally don't do high activity activities, I guess, high energy activities on Mondays. So Amanda's going to be carrying our energy for us today, I think. <laughs> oh, and Lisa's here as well. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, this is going to be so fun. So fun. And Akinsa, man, we've got a great group of people here. Um, oh, so excited for all of you to, yeah, learn about Amanda's work and, um, yeah. And also, well, we'll get into it in a minute, but most of you, well, everyone that I'm seeing right now knows me already, but if you're joining on a replay, um, you know, we're just going to dive right in. If you're joining a replay, let us know, say replay and tag one of us. If you have any questions for Amanda or me, be sure to tag us. We'll make sure we get back to you. Um, I'm always available for a DM. I'm sure Amanda is too. I'm just talking for you, Amanda. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We love to connect. So feel free to reach out. Um, so happy you're here. Uh, my name is Beth Porter. Uh, I, you know, run this little group and love it here. And I run a healing and branding practice. So I'm working a lot with conscious entrepreneurs to build and step into authentically aligned brands. I also work with sole purpose seekers. So folks who are trying to figure out what they want to do with their life, which is kind of how Amanda came to me and, um, you know, healing old wounds and traumas and limiting beliefs that kind of keep you from uh, stepping into your authentic self and really, you know, living here on purpose and having a life of agency and self-sovereignty, all those kinds of things. So um most of you already know this already, but I just thought I would share a little bit about me before diving in. I'm so excited to bring Amanda here, not only because she's got cool stuff to share with us, but uh, most people that I've brought into this group, uh, you know, we have kind of a new relationship, but Amanda and I were actually college pals. So we both studied fashion design at the University of Cincinnati. Uh, we interned at some of the same places like Abercrombie and Fitch and Target and LPK, this branding agency. I forgot we did LPK together too. We did almost all of them, yeah. <laughs> did you do Oshkosh as well, but like at a different time as me? Yeah, I think we did work at the same time though, just different. Maybe I don't that. think we did yeah. New York at the same time. I'm like, no, we did not. I would know, I would remember. <laughs> um, anyway, we had a lot of like, you know, intersection obviously in school and then parted ways after school and reconnected years later. Uh, Amanda was my client when she was working at Procter & Gamble, I was working at LPK as a designer and, you know, anyway, so we've had lots of path crossing throughout our time. And then last year in May, I think of 2020 or April or something yeah. of 2020, uh, Amanda came to me and we uh, went through my three month healing container. So we worked together to uh, do some healing work and give Amanda her um, human design and North Node readings and understanding. And I like to use that to help coach throughout, you know, throughout the process. And, you know, throughout that time of discovery, Amanda just started to completely change and shift and open up to new gifts. And um, 
yeah, that's kind of the early stages of what led her to what she's doing now, uh, which is super fucking cool. And I just want to shout out that Lauren Schlansky has also had a big hand in helping uh, illuminate some of these gifts for Amanda as well. Yeah. And yeah, now, I mean, I just, I want to keep talking for you, but uh, it's truly an honor and a privilege to know Amanda. She's very, very caring. She's a very, very caring person. She has a cancer uh, south node. <laughs> so comes with a lot of heart. And um, she's kind of like also sort of like the, like a mother figure for me as well. So we've had a very like interesting, really loving healing relationship together. Um, Lauren waiting for her credit. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> um, oh, Karen, you made it too. So Karen, Karen G is here as well. Oh, we've got so many good people. Um, Anyway, man is wildly talented. Let's get going. I'd love for you to, you know, tell us about your work. Tell us whatever you want to tell us about this. And if anyone has any questions, um, drop them in the chat. And then, yeah. Also, well, I'll just say this now. If you would like, Amanda's going to do aura readings. So if you would like a mini aura reading, drop your name in the chat, and I'll be sure to capture who is doing that so that we can we can get that, and we'll save some time at the end um, for that. But yeah. Yeah, that was a really wild introduction. Sorry, Amanda. <laughs> I love it all. It's all true too. Um, yeah, yeah. So worked with Beth, and I was I was at this place when I reached out to Beth where I had just had my second baby, was dealing with a lot of postpartum anxiety and depression, got furloughed from my job, and the pandemic hit, and I just went through this, which happens when we all go through major life events, right? Where I was just like. I don't know what on earth I'm here for. Like, I can't, I know I always said to you, Beth, like, I can't even imagine what my purpose would be. And like, let's just do something practical because I had this story that like creativity hadn't served me. I mean, I don't know how many times I've said throughout the years, like what's a fashion designer doing in Cincinnati? Like maybe not the best move. Um, and so, true. <laughs> maybe not the most sustainable move. Um, and isn't what I thought I was where I was going to be anyways. I didn't, I never thought that this, this is location wise or where I would be, um, not in a good or bad way. It just never really is totally the vision, right? Things are unexpected come up. So, um, yeah. And I'm so, I so much loved the human designer in me because Beth was like, mm, I don't mix the creativity yet. And I was like, okay. I was like, okay, we'll see um not really understanding much of it and so as we went through that I was I was coming up with different ideas thinking of like what was resonating with me which is really at a high level it's growing people and things like I do have that like mothering energy I just just want to take care of you sometimes maybe even like over solutioning because I just want you to feel good and um and I love these close authentic one-on-one -on -one interactions with people and I've seen that in so many ways where I'm like, should I be managing people? Should I be doing this? Like, should I, I used to work with students and I loved it. I loved like helping them see their potential, which I think is really at the heart of what gives me energy is helping other people see their potential. But I just didn't understand like how this piece of creativity and things that felt really surface level and kind of ugh, to me, fashion in general, I had like a problem with um, not helping people and see how they come together. So it's been a bit of a trial and error this past few years or learning on, I shouldn't say error, but just learning on what keeps giving me energy. And it started with creating items for people. And really the heart of that still was there, which was I go into your home, I see what you need and like, see what would bring you joy and create it. And that was good for a while, but it still wasn't like getting into the like the depths and more connections with people I was looking for. And so, yeah, on this journey um, in doing a lot of self-discovery and working with Beth and Lauren having a big part in this, we realized that I just have, and in my human design, right? It's, it's the taste maker. Right? All over it. <laughs> um, the curating part, the taste making part. They really have this like knack for style. I see people's style, um, but I think it's beyond that too. I see you know, what, what it is about you that you want to reflect, or maybe it's been, it's probably been there all along. That's the best part is that I think we all inherently know, like 
who we are, it just gets murky a lot. Yeah. And so for me, what, how I see that is a self-expression of how you show yourself outwardly to the world. Um, but things that come up too in this work is, you know, are there body confidence um, parts? Are there vulnerabilities that are hard to talk about? I mean, I think we all have seen someone wear something and think like, oh, I wish I could wear that, right? And maybe you can, or maybe you're not wearing it because it doesn't fit with like your, what I call style archetype, like who you really want to be, you know, and who you really are. It's not just who you always want to be, but who you really are. So um, someone said to me at the end of a style reading that I did, I just think I wasn't giving myself enough credit. And I'm like, that, I love to hear that. I don't, I'm not here to sit here. You say like, you transform my life or, you know, this, like that, I mean, I would take it. It would be amazing. <laughs> it's transformative. I will say that. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'll write that one down. But like, it makes me feel really good when you realize what you had in you, you know, the whole time or that I saw you and that it gave you this confidence because that's, I mean, I think that's what we all, some of us more than others strive for is like people seeing you. And mm -hmm. I've gone through that. I very much like want to be seen, but not want to be seen at the same time. But I want um, people to value me and we all want to be, have people like have us in a community, right? And me, especially as a two, four. But um, I think I've, the whole catalyst for this is I've walked a lot of these things. Um, I've had lots of body image issues from time as a teenager till now. Um, I'm a mom of two and it's really hard. I think it's really hard figuring out how you want to outwardly express yourself to the world when you have a million things going on, like yeah. you're tired, all the things, but also like mentally knowing who you are at that time. So much is transformed for you. Um, and you have a lot of conscious decisions you can make on your own, but there's some that are just kind of not made for you, but just changed for you. when you become a mom that like you are this giver and life giver and a lot of your maybe self-care practices go way down, of course, because yeah. of the GD. And so um, I've worked with a couple mothers and that's like very passionate to me because there are little things you can do. I'm also here for being practical and not saying, come to me and let's do all the new trends or let's, you know, you have to dress up every day. Um, or, or you have to buy all your clothes from Alice and Olivia yeah. and spend thousands of dollars to all that stuff. Like what's something small that we can, we can do to really boost your confidence. It's funny, Beth, because you're saying Monday's a moon day. And I'm like, for some reason I am the most dressed up on Mondays. I mean, I dressed up for all of you today too, but like <laughs> on Mondays than I am on Fridays. And, um, I can talk about more in a bit, but I do these style Friday things. And I'm like, because it's Venus day. Right. And I'm like, maybe I need stuff. Right? Maybe nobody else even needs them. Maybe some other people do, but like I need them because usually by Friday, I'm actually kind of low. I'm kind of yeah. feeling stressed on Friday. My white burnout, I'm white. And like, yeah. what's one thing I can do that day because I'm going to have to post. I don't have to have, might look like I'm put together, but mm -hmm. if I have on like super cute, pattern pants, they probably have an elastic waistband in them. Like, you know, they're comfy and cute. So that's the thing too, is I'm, I feel like I'm rambling, but I had a conversation with a friend the other day and she's, she's a mom, she's been pregnant four times. And she said, it just clicked with me the other day that I can look put together and still be comfortable. And I was like, Oh yes, yeah, you can. And I would love to help you find that. If you, if you haven't found that for yourself, like, what could that mean? Yeah. So uh, that's the kind of things that give me a lot of energy. And that can be in your clothing. Uh, Beth, you asked for a couple like beauty routines mm -hmm. you that we're like, let's make this simple. Yeah, um, like I know nothing about makeup and Amanda was like, oh, here's some like, you know, lip tints and things like, like just, you know, recommendations so that I could do just enough to feel, you know, like I did something and let it be special, but it's not like overboard, you know, it still like fits within like who I am and also gave me permission to not do a lot. <laughs> Cause that was the other piece was that like, Amanda was like, yeah, I mean, you're, you're pretty like, you know, uh, I can't remember the way you described it, but like uh, down to earth or grounded or, or whatever. And I do have a Virgo North node, so that would make sense. But yeah, it confirmed so much. Like I studied fashion in school. So I, I feel like it's so fun to have us both on here because I know style, I know design, 
I know how to put together an outfit. And I still was like, you know, so curious about what my style archetype was, what my aura colors were, what my palette would be, you know, all of that kind of stuff, but also just the experience of being seen. And now I'm just like taking over, but we're just going to, we're just going to roll with it. (laughs) You know, I like talking about everybody else, but not so much myself. So you're good. You're doing me a favor. Uh, Good. Um, But yeah, like, and I love talking about myself. So this is like perfect. Um, Oh, Becca said that she loves listening to us. Thanks, Becca. (laughs) Oh yeah. Maria lives in Cincinnati. Um, So that's fun. Maybe you guys should hook up. Um, Yeah. Oh, yeah, there, there will be aura re- readings, Becca. So if you would like a mini aura reading, let us know. Um, and Amanda will be doing them. So I'll make sure that I look at the time because there's quite a few that are on the docket here. Um, so, but yeah, basically having the reading with you confirmed things that I already knew, but didn't like really let myself lean into. And, you know, the past year and a half has been wild and crazy for everybody. And, uh, you know, for me, I'm just like, sitting in this room all day, <laughs> basically working in like this little space and my husband's right out there. And so, and I moved to Colorado a couple of years ago. So I wear like, you know, leggings all the time or whatever. And so um, I know one thing that Amanda had pulled out in my reading was to, um, to uh, I'm going to say this wrong, Amanda, so you can probably reflect it back, but it was basically that I can use style as like a performance piece so that I can like feel okay, like dressing up for like a live or something like that. And really like pumping it up if I want to and let it be really playful. And I'm like, oh, I've secretly just wanted to do like a fun photo shoot just with like style and like expression. And I was like, oh, I can actually, instead of doing a photo shoot or whatever, like, yes, maybe that will happen one day. But like this, it really spoke to like this core, like creative need that lives within me that wants to express that would normally need a reason to do that. And I feel like you were just like, yeah, no, that can execute, you know, or that can manifest in when you do it, when you record a video for a training or when you're doing a live or whatever. And I was like, oh, so much fun. So it just, uh, there's like freedom in that and letting go of like the identity of who, you know, a lot of us are going through identity shifts, but, and I think we have many throughout our lives, but letting go of the identity of like who I am as a healer and like all those things like the past my past and where I am now um to allow kind of like the the essence of me to kind of shine through and let that guide how I show up and dress um that was really long-winded but no no I and that's what I loved because it's I think sometimes we think we have to have like a reason to dress up and I feel that way too like I mean on the weekends like you know wear t-shirts and leggings or shorts or whatever and then probably chase my kids but um (laughs) And I did feel like when I got called back to work, like that, that gave me the reason to get up and get dressed too. I mean, I know Beth, when we were doing work together, you were like, you just need a routine, but not just, but that's one of the things that'll help you. Like, I couldn't, like, I could not make myself have a routine, but like when I, I do better when like structures are kind of made for me, I still like I'm loosey goosey, but like have a reason to get up. And so like, I think it, it makes us feel less vain or less like we yeah. know, like, like icky, care icky. too much about our, our appearance. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, as women or people who are socialized as women, it's like, you're supposed to look beautiful, but you're supposed to not care about it. <laughs> it's supposed to just be like, and I, I mean, everyone here probably knows my skin journey, but like, I would not look in the mirror when I was in public. Like I would, that would all be like a very private thing. So I've had a very long journey of just like rejecting the mirrored image of myself unless I was like, you know, totally private. And I feel like, yeah, like I'm finally entering a stage of just like, oh, well, it's okay if I, if I'm high maintenance, it's okay if I'm somebody who like really enjoys like nourishing my skin with the products that I use or yeah, dresses up, wears fun earrings, like, you know, all of that stuff. So yeah, yeah it's, your work is super powerful. <laughs> Well, I've seen the, thank you. I've seen the spectrum too. And I'm, I'm sure I've been there in different circumstances as well. Like where it's like, feel too vain to dress up. And like you said, like, but society expects us to be beautiful, but also then like, I've seen too, people need some healing around using their looks and using their style as a crutch too, to, yeah. be, to appear a certain way and like need some healing around that as well. Um, because they feel like guilty about that too. 
And I mean, I even feel guilty when I drop Penny off at daycare a lot of days. Like I have been labeled like Penny's Penny's mom's the fashionista or whatever. And it like, like embarrasses me, but like also makes me feel kind of good. <laughs> like, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like, mom, like uh, yeah. 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 And it's just, it's, but I'm just getting to the point where I'm just like, I feel good. Like, even if, and for me, it's like a, a give and take. It's like, I put nice clothes on, but I did not do my hair. My hair's still wet. Like I don't have any makeup on, but like the clothing it's, it's the ritual part of it. Like the ritual makes me feel good. Like the getting up and choosing something or letting Penny choose my clothes for me. So I let her do that lots of days. Um, but it just makes me feel kind of put together and that's not, not everybody needs that. That's just me. But I think it's like, I said that, that ritual or that mindset or like realizing what you need or what healing you need too, because healing might be that you feel like you need to wear high heels and done up and all of that, but you really want to be more comfortable. So like, what does that look like too? And I actually love the challenge of Lauren had me do one for, and I've had some as well, where it's like, how can I wear like comfy clothes and feel like dressed up? And I mean, during COVID, that's such a big thing, but I'm like, yes, yes, yes. We can wear, I mean, that's my Friday wardrobe. We can wear elastic waist pants that are linen and have like a cute pant and they look good together or like a stretchy rib that's like a different silhouette and looks good too. But it's, I'm basically wearing my pajamas still, yeah. you know, yeah. or. But you know, I, <laughs> yeah, like I'm, I'm you video, I'm, really good. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I was telling my coworkers one time, I'm like, Ooh, these pants. And I stood up and I was like, and all I did was put like this, like leather jacket I've had for 10 years on, on top of it. But all of a sudden it looks like it's really like put together, even though I'm basically wearing pajamas. So, um, yeah, I want to get into the aura readings to make sure we have time. I guess I should say like what I do. I was going to say, <laughs> I'd love for you to share what your, um, what is in a style reading. Yeah. Um, specifically, so people understand this a little bit more, and then we'll dive into the aura readings. Yeah, yeah. So um, the style reading, as I have it set up, I like to I like to have like a structure to it, so the what you get out of it piece of it. But I also like to let everybody know that you guide me a bit too. So um, the first part of what I do is I I do a, a reading in the records. And we see what comes through and some of that style information. But I also ask you, is there anything we want to dig into? And I give you some examples. Is there any body image things that you want to like get some learning around? Um, I had someone once specifically talk about like why certain seasons, the clothing depress them more than others. We looked into that. Um, why some people feel better dressed almost more corporate too. So I asked for that detail. And then I say too, like, it doesn't have to be clothing would style or what would make you feel really good. Is it beauty? Is it that? So do a little bit of digging to personalize it for you. Um, but then, so you get the, you get a, a reading and interpretation from me, which is why I always set up like a 30 minute delivery. Cause I could just send you the PDF guide, but I think the, the message coming through is usually really helpful and sometimes random too. And I don't know why I was, you know, channeled that information, but you can tell me. Mm -hmm. um, so you do have that, you have an aura color reading as well. And I try to make sure it's distinct that, you know, an aura reading is your personal energy. And so it's not necessarily the colors you might wear, although sometimes there's a crossover with it. Um, but I don't want people to get turned off right away when they're like, I don't, I don't ever wear yellow and that's in their aura, but you can use your aura and I'll kind of show you guys today to call in certain energy or get yourself in the mindset to receive certain energy through color. So it's kind of useful in that. Um, and then you get your like style color palette, but I still, again, give you permission to take it and interpret it in the way that is needed. I don't want people to feel restricted, like they're a fall or a winter or that sort of vibe and they can't wear, you know, a bright red that makes them feel good. Or there's a spectrum of reds, of course, right? Um, and then the style archetype, which is my favorite part, because I feel like this is really the true essence of you. And I use archetypes or personas, if you're used to hearing that language, to kind of have you see like an external view of yourself that makes it a little less subjective. It's still subjective, but like a little less so. So you can kind of take your a little less emotion out of it and say, what would the, so mine's the queen, I'm just still getting bare with the queen wear. <laughs> what would the queen wear and for me the queen today I, I'm like oh I should really think about what I wear um top up in all these because it's always black but it's because I love fun pants so like these are like 
it almost looks like a skirt, um, yeah. big giant culotte pants with a pattern on them. And so I feel still like fitted and like put together, but then I have these kind of one of a kind, crazy wild pants on. And that makes me feel like the queen, but these vintage overalls I bought that look really cool on a lot of other people. When I put them on, I was like, it's not the queen. <laughs> and I didn't think about that when I bought them. So I think your archetype one hopefully helps you feel seen in like who you are and it, it crosses over into your life too. So a lot of the times I thought the queen didn't cross over into my life and I'm seeing it, it is. And Lauren told me it is. And now I'm like, yes, I need to embody that more. Maybe I don't feel that way now, but that's what I'm going towards. Yeah. Um, and so it, it probably does feel a bit personal too, but it helps you with these style decisions. So for you, Beth, yours was a couple of things, but this Peter Pan, the lost boys, like what would feel playful, adventurous, confident, like ready to take on anything. How would that show up in your clothing? If you felt that yeah. way, which I was telling Amanda that I'm sort of wearing that Peter Pan and the lost boys inspired yeah. outfit today, <laughs> which is also cool because I was a tomboy when I was growing up. So like, and I was always like, my parents didn't like that I was a tomboy. So this Peter Pan and the Lost Boys piece makes me feel like my like inner child is still with me, if that makes sense. Cause I just wanted to be one of the, one of the boys when I was a kid. So, um, yeah. A healing that came up too, right? Like healing yeah. that story and being, being able to have permission. Oh, we don't mind. <laughs> you can, t- you can talk all about me. <laughs> being able to have like your own permission and sovereignty now to choose what you want to wear. Cause I know you yeah. told me that wasn't really the case when you were younger. And so like, yeah, there was this like childlike playfulness to it because you're like healing that piece too, that happened in childhood, but also like reflecting who you still are as an adult. Right. So juicy and so good. And, um, and that's it like, like integration of like selves, you know, like yeah, yeah. a lot of times that we've like, you know, kicked parts of ourselves often to the shadow. So I feel like having this lens of the archetype to go through is really helpful. And for me, I had a few archetypes. So it was like, oh, of course I have a few archetypes. Like that makes more sense to me because I don't, I'm not someone who like sticks with a certain style and I never really have. And I I like can ebb and flow. And, you know, sometimes I would feel weird about that, but like you help me to be like, no, that's like part of your deal here, you know, and that makes a lot of sense for you. So that was really, really, really illuminating for me. And it just felt like, I know I said this to you privately, but like, it just felt like such a gift to just like sit in front of you, have you deliver this gorgeous PDF of all this stuff. I mean, a couple of boards of curated clothing Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, explanations of the archetypes, obviously the aura colors and all that jazz, but to really just like, it felt like you just saw me. It felt like you were just like here is here's what would yeah it felt just really nourishing I guess the way you deliver everything the way you hold space is just really beautiful so yeah and that's that's like the best compliment that's what I I want like I want this to feel even though I'm doing the reading for you like obviously I gather some information at the beginning but like that it feels almost collaborative because you feel seen in it right like it's not like again, it's not like someone's coming to you with a presentation on here's the trends for this fall or this season. Um, and, and, you know, maybe you're the kind of person I actually did one for someone that I said, like, trends are going to be appealing to you. Um, and in that particular person, I said, um, they do flip through styles and clothing and stuff really often. And that's right for them. And for a lot of us, it's, you know, more longer term, or I'm kind of like, sitting in that more like seeing pieces that feel to me very like high value in terms of like they'll last me a long time because they make me feel like the queen but for some people it's really appropriate um to flip through them so that's why I like to do that I like this story up into up to it so that you can see too how I got to the process that I did of how I pulled these things for you because you do get to um theme boards or style boards that show some different looks with them and um, sometimes I propose how you can wear them together. Sometimes I don't, it just depends on the person. Um, but of course I don't like to leave people hanging either. They're meant to be themes. They're meant to be, um, for you to take and interpret how you want to wear things or show up, um, and feel inspired by, but, um, as I can, I pin the things too on a board for you. So you can find them if you're just like, I love that. Yeah. Um, you can find them too, but 
if you wanted to deeper dive into like your size or your budget or that sort of thing, I can do that as well. But this is kind of just like the setup to it. Um, and then if you like things, you can do that too. And for you, Beth, I did a little shop report too of like, here's the brands I like yeah. for you. Some of them are high-end brands that just yeah. came to mind for me, but here's also where I think you could get similar looks or be even more inspired by um, for these places too. So it just depends on what's appropriate for the person, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's super customized and tailored yeah. too. And I think we haven't mentioned this, but I think it's safe to say in this group, you work with the Akashic Records. So yeah. you, you go into, you know, our individual Akashic Records and then you see all the shit that you see and then you bring it all out and share the story essentially. Yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure that that was, if people were like, how, what do you mean? Like, I mean, you obviously you have a fashion and style background and consumer research background. So you have like a lot of framework in general. Right. Yeah. I think what I do is a combination of, you know, having some practice and being able to see people too, which we all do. We all meet somebody and have our intuition kick in and, and are able to discern some things from looking at them or talking with them. Um, so I use a combination of that and then the Akashic Records, which is why it probably feels really collaborative to me because like your guides are giving me information, which is basically like you in a way, right? Yeah. Um, and it's really fun. And that's why I said, that's why I like to do the reading portion, um, deliver that to you in a conversation, because I want to know, does this feel right to you? Does it resonate to you? Does that spark something in you? Um, and then sometimes there's also just random things. Someone's guide was giving me a really hard time. Didn't really want to talk about style. I was like, okay. Yeah. And <laughs> the main piece they gave me, I mean, I, I figured it out, but the main piece of information they gave me was that this person needed new slippers. And I was like, if say you need new slippers, <laughs> she was like, I do. And I was like, awesome. So glad that landed for you because I was nervous to even say it because it felt so like weird, weird. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, just like not in line with the, the, the process I usually use. Um, so I, I personally love that too, because I get the personality of the guides when I'm in there as well. And it's really fun. Some of them are like fireworks works and excited. I'm there. Some are like, let's talk this out. Like it's yeah. 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 I love that. Ah, oh, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Okay, well, let's dive in. We have about a half an hour. I know you have a hard stop, so I'm gonna make sure that yeah. I help you with time. Um, we are gonna start, I think Krista is the first person that said yes, please for a reading. So I'll start okay. from that comment and then bring us from there. Okay. And then so Krista Gordon, yeah, and you, you do, I'll let you drive, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 you're all good. Um, and I don't know if I'll have time to do this for everybody, but um, Krista, while I'm kind of like opening up the records and doing this process, um, I want you to put in the chat if there's like any energy you want to call into your life right now. And it does not have to be about style, just like in general, what, what would you like to call in? Because I can kind of play with your aura there too. So give me a minute to get us all set up here. Okay, so Krista, see, sometimes I like have to see a little bit more in the dark here. So what I see coming up for you is a lot of red energy and um, just a second, let me see. Okay, red, green, and blue. Okay, so red is um, all about the physical and desires and like the natural tangible pieces of this world. So when I see that come up for people, I mean, it could, of course, it could mean a lot of things for different people, but at a high level, um, I, I usually see it as you're really in tune with the physical body, the physical world. Um, I know a little bit about you, so I could go ahead and make the leap to say, I know you work with some physical aspects. So that to me just makes sense for you. Um, Yours is a pretty deep red, so it also might indicate too that um, you might want to work with red a little bit. You might want to um, to get it to be a little bit lighter and like more vibrant. You might want to just kind of do some journaling around what does um, what physical energies in your body right now, like positive, negative. If you're holding on to something, if there's any emotions stuck in your body, just like do a little thinking around that and. Um, let's see, I have green as well. 
and green is so sometimes I can see like a bubble around people too and where they land can tell me different things so for you green is like the closest to your body which shows me that green is important to you like is important to your self-expression who you are and green is about growth um green sometimes can be you know that you have a desire or connection to nature sometimes it doesn't but it's in there and green can be um very healing green sometimes can be associated with money too but I'd say tap into green if you're like calling in abundance, but I don't think that says anything about you. Um, so I would, for you, I would say like the healing piece of it feels really good um, and energy and it's the heart chakra too, right? So it's like definitely like love, so it's abundance, like generous spirit. And I love, again, I know a little bit about you. I don't know a lot about most people on here, but that feels really nice. That compliment of like green heart led energy and then the physical in terms of like your purpose and what you do and how you help people. And then I think I said blue too. Um, blue is about communication and the throat chakra. Um, but blue is also people who have like a very generous spirit and heart. And it's about the, where you want to get with blue energy is clarity in communication. So like you drive compassion by how clear you deliver information. So um, your blue was like pretty, it was like a pretty like royal cobalt blue, like a good blue. Um, so I don't think that that's like, you need more of that energy, but it might be something when you feel maybe a little closed up in the throat or like you're having trouble communicating, you can like tap in on that energy that you naturally have. Krista wants to bring in more playful. I can see some of these comments, more playful energy. Yeah. I love it. Yay. Okay. So how you can play with um, aura colors is there's two things you can do. So you can, in terms of style, you can wear the color. Um, it's not necessarily like incredible magic that just because I'm wearing orange today, I'm going to tune in with like more playfulness and intuition, but it's like setting the intention to think is very important and like thinking through it. So you could, for playful, I'd say you could um, be around or wear some orange or yellow. And I love to recommend it for like accessories because it can feel really small. It doesn't have to feel like, I don't like how yellow looks on my skin. I don't want to wear that. Like you can bring it in in small ways. You could paint your nails. You could, um, I don't know. I've got this little vase here. That's got like some yellow and orange in it. Like just have it around me. So you can have a mindful way to call in that energy. And the second thing that I just started like practicing myself and I'm like very jazzed about is called color breathing. And all it is, it's very simple. Everybody can do this. You can, as you're doing like a meditation and you're like really connecting to your breathing, you can imagine breathing in like a cloud of, I'm going to say orange energy for you, Krista, for playfulness, like breathing in a cloud of orange energy and on the exhale, you breathe it out, but you envision it like going all the way around your body. So you're envisioning like it, like becoming or like enveloping your aura and like just bringing that energy into it. And it's also really like nice and relaxing and fun. I love that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I love that for Krista too. Okay. The next person that we have on the list is Maria. She's the one that's living in Cincinnati. And I'm excited that if you guys ever connect, <laughs> um, yeah, so Maria, if you're calling in anything specific, feel free to drop it in. Okay, so I'm seeing Maria purple energy and some pink. They're actually kind of like flowing together. Um, but purple is the biggest color I'm seeing for you. Oh, I'm seeing green too. Okay, but let's start with purple. Um, purple is is really connected or violet is really connected to kind of like your intuition, a bit of the spiritual realm. It's sometimes connected with like higher divinity, that sort of thing. So people with purple energy usually feel pretty comfortable in the spiritual space. Um, but purple also can be like people that they can, I don't want to say it. They can be connected with that, like divinity of information, but they want to connect with people and like help them with it or talk to people through it. They can sometimes be more outgoing, not always the case, but it's like 
they have this drive to use the information that they're seeing like so clearly whether they know it or not um, to be able to like forward propel other people and then so if it doesn't resonate with you let me know um, and then pink is also associated with the heart chakra um, pink is nice because it takes the red energy of like the physical body and takes white energy which is like white is like you got the most enlightened space in your journey like you're like mother Teresa or something like that in your life like very rare someone has like all white um, but it can indicate you have you're like going towards some higher level clarification the pink and white together is really nice because it's this or red this like spiritual embodiment of the physical which then sometimes means the heart and so pink is what we all think of probably in terms of like marketing speak and stuff but it's very much associated with love but it's like this like deep like compassionate love and I usually describe it as like when you met your first boyfriend or like and you just mm -hmm. like had that like like maybe infatuation a little bit too but um or I say like when you have a child and you're like oh, what is this um, so people with pink energy are just like lovely to be around and pink energy is, um, really useful too, to breathe in, in the color breathing energy, because it just brings that like positivity and love, um, into your body. And then I said green too. So green, um, again, like I said, it's associated with healing, um, nature, love, again, energy, abundance, um, Yours is a little lighter green, a little yellowy green. So um, yours can be taking some of that heart energy and taking the positive, like radiant qualities of yellow too and bringing that forward. So I think yours is the purple too and the pink. Actually, I have, I don't know if this is true or not, but I feel like you are probably like very connected to other people and like want to see the best outcome for them. Not that we all don't, but that seems like a driving force for you. We're getting that it resonates. And Maria said she's calling in new opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> new opportunities. Ooh, I like that. Okay. New opportunities. I would say you could play just a little bit with blue and red. So maybe blue more than red, but red can be like giving us confidence. I, when I'm trying to intentionally think about my day, I approach my clothing two ways. It's either just intuitively what I want to wear that day and just let it be that, or try to think of like a mindset. So, um, I don't have a lot of red, but when I wear red, it's usually if I want to like appear, I want to feel more confident or have a little bit more fire to it. Um, so I think you can call in a little bit of red energy just in like the confidence. I don't think you need a lot. I think blue would be really nice because it's about whether you're actually using your throat chakra or not, it's about um, how you're like showing up outwardly to the world and how you're like communicating um, about yourself or about whatever these opportunities you're looking to call in. I think it just feels like really good in terms of like speaking what it is you might want. Maybe you're not sure what you want yet, but I think when you, if you do or when you do, that'll be important. So you can wear Juicy. it. Juicy. <laughs> I love this. Oh my gosh. So good. Um, we have Michelle, Michelle Voller. If you're on, uh, let us know what you're calling in, but that is the next person on here. Hi, Cassie. Cassie just joined. Oh, hey, Cassie. Oh, and Valeria too. Hi, Valeria. Oh, it's like a fun, this is a fun it's like a party. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I wish we were all in person, but okay. okay. I'll let that go. <laughs> Michelle. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Michelle, I have purple and yellow for you. A little bit of blue too. Got a blue group here. Um, I'm gonna go with yellow first because I haven't talked about yellow, but I think purple is your overall like biggest color that's in your aura. And ooh, I think that's why I want to talk about yellow first. So yellow feels like it's closest to your body. And the ones that are closest to your body are a bit more about like your personality or how you kind of carry yourself through life. And it's usually a little unknowingly um, and it can change. I should have said that at the beginning, all of this can change um, depending on this is like a snapshot. Yeah. yeah. Lauren's I know changed um, 
and I think it might have even been for that day. So yeah, it can change. But Michelle, I'm seeing yellow um, in like your closest part of your body. And so yellow is like I always smile with yellow because it's so radiant. And it's so, so Michelle, if everyone knows her. Sorry, I'm like jumping out. <laughs> I love validation. Um, it's so, I do and I don't. Uh, it's so yellow, it's, it's so radiant, it's the sun. It's just like, it's not that it's carefree, but I think that it presents outwardly, it's magnetic to other people because it presents itself as positive. So even if you, and I don't think this is the case for you, Michelle, but even if like someone were to say, I don't think I'm that positive of a person, like you might unknowingly be magnetizing to people because it's in your aura. Um, I do not see this for you, Michelle, but sometimes with yellow auras, they can get a little muddy too. And yellow is also about the self-esteem. So if you ever are feeling anybody like your self-esteem has taken a hit even if it's momentary you could do that color breathing where you picture a really bright vibrant sunshiny yellow and bring that into your aura or breathe it in and then blow it out around your aura but I think you have that already Michelle um I said purple is your biggest one um again being very connected to the spiritual receiving information and wanting to impart that to others in a very helpful way and then blue, again, is about being able to speak it and communicate it and um, doing it with so much compassion and generosity. But it's also, I forgot to say, it's also about hitting at the truth. And it's usually, it might not be total like SAG energy, like my husband, but it's about like helping others by speaking the truth, maybe not your truth, but like the truth as you see it. And so sometimes it's very intuitive too, because it's just it just is to you. It's just like the facts because mm -hmm. you received it versus seeing it. Does that make sense? Yeah, Michelle has the 24 or the 2343 genius freak gate and our channel in human design. Oh. And so that resonates for that in oh. my mind. Because I know, I know backstories. I'm like everybody in here, I feel like almost. <laughs> um, Michelle wants, Michelle's bringing an ease. Yeah. Yeah. I would work with, I would work with green, um, green and then maybe orange, but I'm going to say green first. Um, because green again is like very healing and I would work with like a pine needle green, like a deep, um, foresty green, because that one in particular is a bit more soothing, um, than like a grass green, which is like very vibrant. And again, that like, Oh, big heart energy. But this one's like, yes, like deep breath, like even like, I don't know, I love, I love a pine scented candle. So like, or a Christmassy scented candle. It's like, mm. so I would, um, I think for you, it's more about breathing it in versus wearing it, but like, or having it in your space, but that, those are always options too. Like, it's more about noticing, um, those choices. I don't have any green around me actually, but I have like this blue too. My desk is way more interesting than my background, but uh, <laughs> let me say that. Uh, so I, or I have a pink, a pink lamp on my desk and I have it like very purposely because I like it, but also like, whew, I need that like compassionate, positive energy sometimes to like distill the thoughts in my head. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Pine. Love it. Okay. Next is Cynthia. So Cynthia, drop in what you're calling in if you're here. I'm going to look up a little, I don't know why I don't really need a last name, but for some reason it like helps me. Oh, yeah, that makes good. sense to me. Okay. Ooh, Cynthia, I'm seeing like a, it's a pink, but it's not quite magenta, but it's like sort of in that field. So I'll tell you both of them for that. And then some yellow and blue too. Um, so again, pink, Deep compassion. Magenta though is magenta is like a combo of purple and red. So people that have magentas in their auras um, usually are really in tune with both the physical and the spiritual and can like feel very comfortable in both and, and use both of those like in their decision making or their day. Um, but because yours is so bright and vibrant, I'm thinking that that's um, 
that's really important. And sometimes magentas feel, I hate using this word, but it is the one that comes up like nonconformist, or they do things a little differently, or people don't really like get them. I know you have magenta in it, your aura. Um, like they feel, yeah, just like they, they kind of like stick out or maybe they have a home, but it's taken them a while to like find their group of people, right. Or the people that see them or get them. Um, but because of that, these people can have bring in or call in like really great ideas or be visionary or like see things a little differently because, because they have that energy in there. So I feel like yours is like, it's like visionary, but feels like so like yummy and heart led and like, ah, because it's got a lot of that pink in there. Um, and I said yellow too. You have mostly yellow is your biggest for us. So again, that's like the ra radiance, positivity. I don't want to like dull, dull it down with saying sunshiny, but it is, it's just like positive energy to, to impart to others and generosity um, with all of that. Um, sometimes though, because it's associated with self-esteem too, sometimes people's yellow energy, like their ego likes to pop in more than others. And they have to constantly balance like this like generosity, like wanting to give to people, but also like seeing like, I don't know how to explain it, like seeing the possibilities of things aren't always what they seem or great or anything. So it's like this constant, like almost like checking yourself in there mm -hmm. too, that sometimes appears for yellows. Um, and then blue, blue's like your smallest, but I mean, it's just like not as big as the purple and sort of magenta colors, but it's still in your set to work with, which again, generosity, throat chakra, speaking the truth as you, as you receive it and, um, doing that as a gift for others. Ooh, success. <sighs> I'm going to say green and red. I hesitate with green because I'm like, I mean, some people use it for money and abundance, but I'm like, but also a lot of people use it for money and abundance. So let's talk about green, like, and seeing it being heart led. So success is, is hitting at what you, which I'm saying red to what you really desire. So getting, um, connecting with what those deep desires are and what you really want and being kind of discerning that and being clear on that. And then using that green energy to just like, like let it all like rain down and feel good. Oh, I love that. So I'm like, I love all of it. Oh, you're feeling really fun. This is really good. No, you have eight minutes. So um, um, we have we have four more. So I just before we get into that, do you want to try to do four quickly, or would you want to like capture the names of the last couple of people and pop back on later and tag them? What do you think feels good? Yeah, I, can, I, want, I want you to feel good doing whatever you're doing. Yeah, um, that might be a good plan. Let's strive for two and see. And I think since I've named most of the colors now too, people probably get the gist of what their colors yeah, are. Um, totally. But if anybody has any additional questions, you can 100% DM me. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, so Lisa is next. Lisa, what's Lisa's last name? Uh, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but oh. Rantre. I have to look too. Sorry, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa, you have some orange, orange and purple. Okay. Yes, purple is a little bit bigger than orange. So we talked about purple. If you have any questions, pop them in, but we talked about that. Orange, we haven't talked about so much. Orange is connected to the sacral chakra. It's very much connected to intuition um, and going from your gut feelings, but orange is also a bit more playful. Um, orange is <laughs> her question or what she's calling in at is like, oh, that's so in line with the orange, I feel like. Oh, good, 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 good. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like just feeling, feeling into that intuition, using that as a tool. Um, orange sometimes too can be present a, a bit like yellow, a bit more like radiant magnetic energy, but it's very, um, again, it's like more outwardly. So it's interesting. You're like tapping into your intuition, which is obviously very inward and seeing the answers through your sacral center and what you want, but also like presenting out to people or attracting people in a very outward way. So people are probably going to be a bit more drawn to you. Um, sometimes people orange in their aura are a bit more high energy, not always the case. Um, but it's really just about not stalling, like hearing your intuition and being able to make decisions from that, go with it, realize what it is you're looking forward to next, all of that. 
and yeah, and purple too. So purple is your biggest one. Um, I don't know what you look like, but I'm like trying to see like a little person in my head. I think orange is closest to your body actually. So I think that orange is like a bit more in your like personality realm or like how you maybe even how other people see you. I can see that. She's looking for next steps. So what would you suggest for that? Okay. Um, I'm going to say red and indigo. So red for that confidence again, like and people seeing you through there. And then indigo, indigo is um, still connecting to your intuition because it's got some of the purple spiritual, just like receiving information in it, but the blue and like um, being clear and discerning and being able to communicate that information. So I think if you call in, I actually gonna say mostly indigo, some red, but mostly indigo. I think if you breathe that in or, you know, see some indigo around you, or even when you wear your jeans, just think like, I'm calling in this energy, um, using that to have the next step sort of appear to you. Cause it should be like, kind of just it, when you work with it, it just kind of like coming into your system and you know that it's the truth. Amazing. Oh my God. Lisa, let us know how that lands. Okay. We've got Karen G. Okay. Karen G. Janicopolis, but G for short. All right. Karen, I see some orange energy for you, which feels good to me. Um, and I see that like surrounding you or being closest to your body. I think that's again, like more of your personality, like again, really pay attention to your gut, playful adventure. Is that what you want to call in? Okay. We'll work with that orange that you naturally have. Um, like you are a playful adventure, Karen. <laughs> like you, you got it. Um, I also see a blue for you, but it's really bright blue, really bright white, which makes me feel like um, you speaking the truth that you know, being compassionate, being clear with people, um, helping them in that feels very healing, feels very like on track to your purpose since that white energy is like almost otherworldly. It's very, very bright when I see yours. Um, and then a bit of red, which is fun because then that means you're also like grounded and in tune with where you are like in this world um in terms of more playful adventure work with that orange but i think you can also work with pink because it's going to make you feel like so heart-led and so yummy and just like i don't know seeing that in your life i think that's it yeah you could do yellow too but i just feel like like orange like you probably you have so much positivity in your life so i think pink is a good one i love that all right we should probably wrap up yeah. and there's two more. So Amy Robbins Wilson and then Becca Lear. Okay. And if, if you're open to it, yeah. jumping back on, I don't know when you're, you have time to do that. Um, okay. Yes, I can do that. Um, what time is it? I don't even know. I can do that like one thirty or two. So I can just, um, yeah. Yeah. So I can just do, like, just open up a live. Right. And just, and yeah. Do okay. Yeah. yeah. And tag the ladies. And so if you two want to drop in what you're calling in, yeah. Then Amanda will have that and she can follow up with your aura. Thank you so much for being here live. Um, yeah. Karen just bought a pink sweatshirt and Lisa just uh, painted their house a version of indigo. So how cool is that? Yay. Oh my God, this is so good. Thank you. Love thank it. you for being here. Yeah. And thank you for letting me read your auras. It's like obviously yeah. very generative to me and just feels really good. I love it. Okay. I'll give you a minute to get to your next thing, but yeah. um, Thank you everyone. And I'm excited to hear these next two auras later today. Yeah. Oh, and were you going to pop in the link too for anybody that wants to find? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. The link is at, it's in the descriptor of this. Um, so yes, if anyone wants to connect with Amanda, obviously DM, but there's a link to connect with her and book um, a, an intuitive style reading if that's something you would like. Perfect. Thank awesome. you so much. Bye. Okay. Bye.